In the heart of the United Kingdom, a nation with a storied history of grand infrastructure, the HS2 Railway Project emerges as one of its most ambitious and contentious endeavors. Envisioned as a high-speed rail link designed to cut travel times between London and Birmingham, this project was expected to transform the nation's transport network. Spanning a planned 540 kilometers, HS2 aims to propel trains at speeds of up to 360 kilometers per hour, dramatically reducing journey times across the country. Initially estimated at 37.5 billion pounds, the cost has ballooned to over 62 billion pounds, making it one of British history's most expensive infrastructure projects. Yet, as this project drags on, facing delays and escalating costs, public confidence wavers. With Phase 1 set to connect London to Birmingham by the early 2030s and Phase 2 intended to extend further north, one question looms large. What is it about HS2 that has made it so deeply controversial? The roots of the HS2 project stretch back to the early 2000s, a period when the demand for additional rail capacity became increasingly apparent. The existing rail lines were struggling to accommodate rising passenger numbers, and the government believed that a new high-speed rail line could alleviate some of the pressure. It's the most exciting development in railways. By 2010, a detailed route for HS2 was unveiled, envisioning a Y-shaped network that would stretch from the bustling heart of London in the southeast northward through the rolling landscapes of England. This ambitious plan sought to connect London to Birmingham, situated in the West Midlands, with the network branching out further north toward Manchester, nestled in the northwest, and Leeds, located in the northeast in West Yorkshire. The project, spanning approximately 540 kilometers of new high-speed rail, promised to slash travel times between London and Birmingham to just 49 minutes, a significant reduction from the current journey, making it 30 minutes faster. The Envision route included a new high-speed line from London's Euston Station right in the city's central core, up to Birmingham, with a crucial junction at Han Sacre in southern Staffordshire, which would link to the existing West Coast Main Line. Designed to reach blistering speeds of up to 360 kilometers per hour, the trains aim to transform travel across these regions, potentially driving economic growth in the area served. However, the original grand vision of the line has been substantially scaled back. The once planned eastern branch to Leeds, which would have covered about 225 kilometers through the heart of England's industrial north, has been canceled, and the western branch now halts at Birmingham curtailing the project's initial scope. As HS2 progressed, its scale and complexity became evident, revealing that it involved more than just laying tracks. The project faced significant environmental disruption, complex engineering challenges, and rising costs. Initial plans for a vast network encountered obstacles, including major environmental concerns due to the route cutting through protected areas and technical difficulties with constructing tunnels and viaducts in challenging regions, leading to strong opposition and increased complexity. As questions about HS2's future persist, one wonders, what are the intricate construction challenges that have pushed this ambitious project to the brink of collapse? The initial phase of the HS2 project involved carving out the route for the high-speed trains a massive undertaking that demanded meticulous planning and precise coordination. One of the most challenging and significant tasks was the excavation and construction of the tunnels through the Chiltern Hills, a range of chalk hills in southern England. These tunnels, each extending over 16 kilometers, were a feat of modern engineering, but came with an enormous price tag. To accomplish this, Two colossal tunning boring machines, or TBMs, affectionately named Florence and Cecilia, were employed. Each TBM is a mechanical behemoth, specifically designed to chew through the chalky earth beneath the Chilterns. As they advanced, they simultaneously installed pre-cast concrete segments to line the tunnel walls, ensuring the structure's stability. The cost of these tunnels alone reached an astounding 750 million pounds, and this was before a single meter of track had been laid. As the construction pushed forward, the complexity of the project became even more apparent. 
One of the most notable additions was the inclusion of green tunnels, environmentally friendly structures designed to blend into the landscape by being covered with vegetation. These tunnels, some stretching nearly three kilometers, were implemented to mitigate the visual impact on the surrounding countryside and to preserve local wildlife habitats. While these green tunnels were a response to intense local opposition and environmental concerns, they added a significant layer of complexity to the project. The construction of these tunnels required precise engineering, not just to support the weight of the earth and the vegetation above, but also to ensure they remain structurally sound over time. This decision took place nearly a quarter of the journey from London to Birmingham underground, while environmentally conscious, substantially inflated both the budget and the timeline. Above ground, the construction involved extensive groundwork, requiring the installation of embankments, cuttings, and viaducts to support the high-speed rail line. In areas where the terrain posed natural obstacles, the tracks needed to be elevated. This meant constructing substantial viaducts, which are large bridge-like structures designed to carry the rail line over valleys, roads, and rivers. Each viaduct required meticulous design and construction, involving the use of reinforced concrete and steel to ensure they could withstand the high speeds and loads of the trains. The precise alignment of these structures was critical, as even slight miscalculations could lead to significant delays or structural weaknesses. The complexity of the HS2 project was further amplified by the need to construct new stations capable of handling the high-speed trains. One such station is the Old Oak Common in West London, which is set to become one of the largest railway stations in Europe. The station will feature six underground platforms specifically designed for HS2 trains. The construction of Old Oak Common required the excavation of a vast area, creating a hole nearly a kilometer long, 70 meters wide, and 20 meters deep. This massive excavation was necessary to accommodate the station's platforms and the intricate network of tracks and services needed for high-speed rail operations. Over 2,000 workers were involved in this part of the project, coordinating efforts to ensure that every aspect of the construction met the strict safety and engineering standards required for such a high-profile infrastructure project. Moreover, the complexity of Old Oak Commons construction is not just about the scale, but also the logistics. The station's underground platforms require sophisticated ventilation systems to maintain air quality and ensure passenger comfort. These systems involve a network of air ducts, fans, and sensors, all of which must be seamlessly integrated into the station's design. Additionally, the station will house a vast array of electrical and communication systems, all of which must be protected from the elements and potential damage from the constant flow of high-speed trains. The project also necessitated the installation of an intricate network of power supplies and signaling systems. High-speed trains require a consistent and robust power source, which in HS2's case comes from an overhead line system, or OLE, that delivers electricity directly to the trains. This system involves miles of cables, supported by a series of masts and gantries, carefully aligned to ensure there's no disruption in power delivery as the trains reach speeds of up to 360 km per hour. The HS2 project, launched in 2012 and backed by the High Speed Rail Act in 2017, has faced numerous challenges, leading to delays and a significant budget increase from 32 billion pounds to nearly 100 billion pounds. The complex and controversial land acquisition process involving compulsory purchases across the UK, triggered legal battles and protests, slowing the progress. Rising construction costs, unforeseen engineering difficulties, and efforts to minimize environmental impacts, such as tunnel construction and sensitive areas and wildlife protection, further inflated the budget. Urban construction in densely populated areas like London and Birmingham also added to the financial strain. Despite financial cuts to the HS2 project, significant progress continues, particularly on Phase 1, which will connect London to Birmingham. Construction is well advanced, with major developments at stations like Old Oak Common. Phase 2A, extending the line from Birmingham to Crewe, has also seen some progress, though its future is uncertain due to recent government decisions. The northern extension to Manchester has been abandoned 
but there are discussions about reviving parts of this section through private investment. London Euston Station, initially planned as the primary terminus, remains critical but troubled, with completion dependent on private funding. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update.